Hi guys, this is RC Shim on the field. And today I have the Blade Chroma, which Horizon Hobby was nice enough to send me for review. So I can test fly this copter a bit. So first I did a compass calibration because this unit was already flown a few hundred kilometers away from, from this location. So this is basically a good idea. Compass calibration is easy. You go into the settings, compass. You have to rotate it like this. If you want to see an easy tutorial on, on calibration, I, I will link you this, but it's really easy. So I'm having the 1080p model here with the chroma cam on it and the nice ST10 radio. What's nice about this thing here is that it has built-in screen. If you double click on the screen you get the full screen. Nice thing, uh, initially I have 16 satellites without a lot of waiting time. I like this. And I will also use the X1, the 4M cam in video mode. I have a first person view for you guys. So long pressing the red button starts the motors. We can try to follow the train now. Another shot. The shot should be epic. I'll try to see if I find the dark. Now I have activated the home point. Please step back. We will see if he lands on my Yatsushim logo. He should. Okay, so he landed just you know, half half a meter away from the starting position, which is okay. Yeah, uh, the the descension rate was quite high, but he landed really smooth then um, when he felt the ground. So. Do they have to ever land where the Patrich walk is? I flew around 24 minutes before I ran into the auto landing mode on 10.5 volts here. If you see the battery status blinking, you should really land. I wanted to take another flight 
or another run down in the following mode, but he then initiated the auto landing and I tried to steer this and he just tipped over and if he tips over and the motors are blocked, the propellers are blocked, it goes into this beep mode which will help you find it if it crashed somewhere, which is not so bad idea. But the crash was in, in soft grass, it was no, no problem, just a few dirty props, not even broken ones. So, first crash was a success, I would say. So now I turn him away with the cam and enable smart mode, which is tracking, and he turns so the cam faces me. Which I like. I have to adjust the gimbal a bit. And now I can move away. And he should be able to follow me. We'll try to irritate it. Oh yes, and you have to enable the follow mode or the tracking mode on the ground for it to work in smart mode. You cannot activate it after you start it. Totally weird feeling to, to just fly without looking at the drone. But he does a nice job of following me. He's almost too slow for me. <laughs> now we will see if he follows the height of this hill. He doesn't follow the contours of this hill. So as I'm moving downwards the slope, his altitude increases in the sky. So in tracking mode it doesn't look like he adjusts the gimbal for you. And here on my test he also keeps the same altitude than he he started at. And now I want to test if a return home returns to the receiver or to original coordinates. So I'm out some 50 meters distance and I walked some 20 30 meters away now switching to home and he flies to my coordinates really nice does a really oh that does a really nice job of coming to me but yeah, only about five meters away from me. Now he would have landed in the in the slope. So I will walk on a nice open space with enough space here and see if return home now does what what is supposed to. It flies directly to me with good speed and lands good 10 meters away from me. And this, it was a bit of a bumpy landing with three times up, but you know, very nice. So, really impressed by the return home. So, return home flies directly to the controller and lands about one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, yeah, about nine steps away from my location, which is maybe five to six meters. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. If you lost the copter somewhere out there, make sure that in the line between 
the copter and you, five meters before you is enough space to land the craft. Or you could always, if he returns to you, you can always uh, take over steering and land yourself where you want to. I'm gonna try to fly some FPV now in the border of my allowed area, which is not much with 200 meters. To give you an idea of the the Wi-Fi quality, and it's it's a screenshot. Now I have three, four, five, six, seven seconds the same image. I mean, you still get the telemetry data. <laughs> Don't like this. My video disconnected. I mean, it could be humid air today but yeah that's not a nice not a nice thing to happen mid-air yeah now I have control again but as you see it it's I'm turning so you see the the data rate better maybe it looks okay now. Beginning to stutter now. Yeah, and here it is really bad. I mean, I still see the home cursor. The gimbal works great. I'm flying 25 kilometers sideways. No idea where I'm at. Should have uh, seen myself. But I will run into this 200 meter geofence now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like being limited. Maybe we can, we could do another. Wow, it was a fast turn. It turns really fast on the yaw axis. It's really fast. Ah, and uh, now I saw the landing gear. Okay. I really love that the homecoming feature though. It, it works great. And you can relax. Sit down. And wait for your copter to be delivered. It returns with 13 kilometers per hour. It's not super fast, but maybe a an efficient Efficient speed to fly home. And it's already home now. So after it returns to me, I wanted to drain the battery until the first battery protection level would kick in to then see how long it would take for the second protection level, which is land, how long this will take. So I took a few manual flights around here while sitting on the bench. Okay, this is the aircraft battery voltage <laughs> which blocks totally the video image. Okay, so you can't oversee it. Yeah, and it blinks also in this red colors. And six. Let's see now how long it will hover until it will really descend. I mean, I think, I think it really flies efficient. I'm gonna record the sound of the flying for you. And now comes the train by.
30. This is the second running stretch. Right. And not long after first. Updating the geo fans so you can fly more than 200 meters of distance. It's as easy as plugging in a standard USB cable here in the copter. Turn on the copter, wait a few minutes, plug in the USB cable in the laptop and download the Chroma GUI. Maybe you, you have to install a USB driver, I'll link it as well. Um, it will auto connect to the correct COM port and then under calibration you can set geofence which is a default of 200 meter and the height limit. I've set both values to maximum value. Yeah. See some more information here. Firmware, I didn't find a new firmware in version 101. Okay, so that's it. So thanks for watching my flight tests here. If you want to know something more, just leave me a comment, let me know your feedback. And I will probably also upload the third part of this Chroma review with just a few really nice shots that I was able to capture with it. So keep an eye out for that, maybe next week. Okay, so thanks, bye.